Welcome to PCR 2019. My name is Alex Abizaid from Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm very privileged to have two great celebrities in interventional cardiology, <laughs> Professor Marty Leo and Professor Antonio Colombo. We are here today to discuss the current use of drug coating balloon. And I'll start with the first question for both of you. Do we really need the DCB nowadays? And what would be the most important indications for these devices? Well, first, in the United States, you understand DCB for coronaries is not approved. So we have essentially no experience. So we have a fascination that this is an important gap area that needs to be filled. And the specific indications that we're most interested in certainly is instant restenosis, mm -hmm. certainly small vessels. We think maybe selectively in some situations of high bleeding risk where you might consider it. There may even be some situations of very high restenosis risk where you might combine it with a drug eluding stent. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a versatile device and I think it's going to have important implications that will add to what we do in the U.S. Antonio, you agree with that? What would be the advantages and disadvantages of uh, DCB in your practice? I think uh, DCB uh, will give uh, a unique uh, advantage, uh, excluding uh, the chapter of instant restenosis. Uh, when you do DCB in a native uh, vessel, uh, you allow the vessel to remodel in the future. When you place a stent, uh, you, you uh, jail re the remodeling. Uh, at the best, uh, you have uh, no change. We know how important is remodeling, especially in small vessels, and the drug-coated balloon allow uh, the vessel to remodel. And I really think uh, this is uh, the hope that we had uh, with bioresorbable scaffolds, uh, to free the mm -hmm. vessel from uh, the possibility to expand. Fantastic. So, Mari, we started a long time ago with Paclitaxel coating balloon. So mm -hmm. uh, now we, we start to see some interesting data on Cirolimus. Why did it, it happen? Why not Cirolimus from the beginning? I mean, obviously, for all drug eluting stents now, Cirolimus and Cirolimus analogs are the default pharmacotherapy. We think it has the best efficacy safety profile, but it's not so easy for this drug to be retained in the vessel wall. Mm -hmm. It was much easier to get Paclitaxel into the vessel wall, so it was used preferentially in the beginning. Now there's some creative technologies that are being developed that allow Cirolimus to efficiently get into the vessel wall from a balloon and to stay there for long enough to exert an effect over the first several months. So for instance, one of the newer technologies uses phospholipid submicron particles that encapsulate Cirolimus particles and serves as an excipient to transfer into the wall. Mm -hmm. So the newer, more sophisticated technologies like this, I think will allow Cirolimus to become a very effective partner with the balloon in these new DCB formulations we're seeing. So still talking about uh, specifically about Cirolimus eluting balloon, drug coating balloon, Anton, you are very fortunate to have experience, to be exposed to some of these new devices here in Europe. Can you share with us some of the clinical data? I think uh, uh, so far uh, the clinical data are very encouraging and positive. And one aspect I like to stress uh, is the fact that these new technologies uh, of delivering limus uh, limits uh, the risk of distal embolization. Uh, especially when you use long balloons, uh, mm -hmm. we have seen uh, slow flow uh, caused by microparticle embolization. And this problem seems to be very much contained with uh, this new technology. And I believe uh, this is a risk that you want to minimize, and uh, I'm happy about uh, this possibility. So in, in your practice, uh, the follow-up of these patients, do you think that they're going be, to behave as well as, as a good best-in-class DES? I think so. Nevertheless, uh, you cannot uh, put a drug-coated balloon in every lesion. You mm -hmm. decide to do so when uh, the lesion preparation result is optimal. Mm -hmm. If the lesion does not behave well mm -hmm. with the lesion preparation, uh, bed dissection, mm -hmm. uh, lumen gain insufficient, don't struggle. 
you place it's a stent. Sad. It's nothing wrong to place a stent. Be selective, but if you are uh, able and willing uh, mm -hmm. to be selective, I would say 70% of the time uh, you use a drug coated balloon, 30% you accept uh, a stent uh, implantation, your result will be good. You have to also to be willing to spend time to prepare the lesion. Yes. Don't dilate the lesion with the drug coated balloon period. Prepare the lesion and then do drug coated balloon. Fantastic. So, Mari, as one of the best trialists I ever met, <laughs> Uh, what, uh, what would be the, the ideal study design to convince FDA to approve DCB in the United States? So either fortunately or unfortunately, the FDA requires clinical evidence. It's nice to have impressions, it's nice to have strong positive feelings, but the FDA wants data. So we have to present them with a convincing clinical trial, which in this case will have to be randomized trials. Mm -hmm. So we're in the process of developing a series of randomized trials that I think are achievable that should convince both the FDA and the practicing community of the utility mm -hmm. of a drug coated balloon. So the two areas that we focus on are instant restenosis, mm -hmm. where we'll do some form of non-inferiority trial. These studies are usually three to 400 patients with a primary endpoint of target lesion failure, usually at a year and comparing a drug-coated balloon to, in, in, in the one design I'm most interested in, standard therapy, which would either be a balloon or, or um, one of the new um, a, um, a preparatory balloons or a drug-eluting stent. Um, so that's one trial design in one class of patients. The other is small vessels, and mm -hmm. we learned a lot with basket small too, and that was a very effective study. I think if we could replicate those results of non-inferiority in small vessels, comparing a drug-coated balloon to a stent, which I don't like putting in small vessels, mm -hmm. then I think it would be a winner. Mm -hmm. So that also would be a non-inferiority design, probably target lesion failure again. Um, and my feeling is that we have a very good chance of being able to demonstrate that with this new generation of drug-coated balloons, that at least for these two indications with randomized data, that we could get FDA approval and general acceptance. Excellent. I think this was a great discussion and we really hope that uh, these innovative devices will help us uh, with the armamentarium in our cath lab to in difficult situations such as small vessels, ISR, and potentially side branch for bifurcation. With that, I thank you so much for your instructive uh, interview. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.